Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off the late pick four on Stars and Stripes Saturday at beautiful Belmont Park. It's race number seven, it's the grade two Belmont Sprint Championship. It's a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Sprint and you can bet it with your new DRF Bets account. Sign up, grab a hundred bucks in free cash. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Here's the field for the Belmont Sprint Championship. We're going seven furlongs for $350,000. The morning line favorites a hard hitter. It's the number one limousine liberal. He's banked close to 1.5 million mm -hmm. in his career. He's a bit underrated. He also has never won outside the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Yeah, is, is he? Is he underrated? I Why? think so. Oh, really? He shows uh, up every single time sure. and runs, doesn't he? Yeah, but he 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 is what he is. I mean, I don't. I don't think there's any way to look at him and think, oh, you know, people underestimate this. I was like, you think what you see on the page is what you get with Limousine Liberal. He is a good horse. This is a good distance for him. I think he did a good trip in this race. And maybe more than anything else, Dan, you know, for a grade two sprint in New York, winning, you're in for the Breeders' Cup, pretty big purse. I don't know where all the horses are, but uh, they're not in this race, and that gives Limousine Liberal at least a little bit of an advantage. I think he's come back real good as a six-year-old for trainer Ben mm -hmm. Colebrook. He won that race at Churchill over a sloppy track two starts back. Yeah. and. Colbrook had an opportunity to run him in the true north, probably to prefer distance sprinting right. on the Belmont Stakes undercard, and he decided, you know something, I'm going to run in the Met Mile, a mile race he had never routed in his prior 21 starts. Yeah. And all things considering, I think that was kind of an uncomfortable trip for Limousine hmm. Liberal. He didn't break very well, and he was kind of in and among horses, and I thought it was really in tight, tracking hmm. the pace. Now, he ended up finishing third, and when I watched the stretch drive, I said, he finished third because there wasn't a lot of running going on behind yeah. Limousine Liberal. The problem was there was a lot of running going on ahead of him. Those yeah. two horses are just better than he is. I think that was an underrated performance. Mm -hmm. I like him turning back okay. to seven, and I think he's the horse to beat. Uh, listen, I can't really argue with, with him being the horse to beat in this race. I, I guess I look at the my, my little differently than you do. I, I didn't think that trip was bad. He didn't break great in that race, but otherwise, I felt like his trip was fine. He was in position at the top of the stretch. He was no match for the one-two finishers, which is all well and good. He finished third. Um, worth pointing out that he just held off discreet lover who was about yeah. 8,000 to yeah. one in that race for third. I thought he ran fine. I think he ran great. Um, it just, to me, this is just the right spot for him. There's there's really not that many different places to go in here. The key of the race could very well be pace. Limousine Liberal, we know, can be close. Yeah. Uh, his main competition, or one of his main competition, is the two Whitmore, a horse that we know likes to come from the back of the pack. So as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, we'll see Whitmore. He's last. And we'll see Limousine Liberal. And I think they'd be very happy with that trip, the Limousine yeah, Liberal folks. As for Whitmore, they're just hoping this 3, 4, and 5, right. they maybe go at it and hook up hot and heavy. Whitmore's last last three races on fast going have resulted in triple digit buyer speed figures. He ran to a really good horse in Imperial Hint, a horse that you could argue would be the favorite if he was in this spot. Yeah. He could easily win this race. Okay. He's a talented horse. What do you think about him at the seven? Yeah, I don't know. It's very interesting to me when I was going through his PPs to see that he's only made one start at seven furlongs. Um, and I don't really feel like you know, that's a situation where he's just way better at six and that's why they've avoided it. I mean, this is a horse you have to remember going back to him as a three year old. He ran pretty well in some of those two-turn races on the Derby Trail for a while. He didn't really want to go that far, but he ran pretty well in those races. I actually feel like seven furlongs might be a better distance for him. Um, two starts back on that sloppy track, he didn't run great, but that was a wet track. I don't care that much about that race. Um, I'm fine with him at the seven. I guess this race could set up pretty well for him. He's obviously, to me anyway, I think he's every bit as good a horse as Limousine Liberal is. I thought it was pretty tough to separate these two horses. I love Lulu. The number three is going to be part of the pace. There's no doubt about that. Just looking through his PPs, he's been in the exact a 20 of 44 times throughout his career. And he goes out for one of the hottest trainers in the country, Unreal. Jason Service, who's been on absolute fire, not only at Belmont, at Monmouth, Delaware, you name it. I Love Lulu was listed as a vet scratch on June the 22nd. I think he is an admirable New York bred, but with this pace scenario, could be in trouble against graded foes. Yeah, I agree with that. It's interesting that he turns up in this race, though, for Service. We haven't seen him since the end of April. You know, that affirmed success he was in, I mean, they bet him in that race. He didn't look like an odds-on favorite in that race. He, they bet him in that race like like they knew he was gonna win, and he won that race actually very easily. It was three quarters of length at the end. He never looked like he was gonna lose in there. Um, that was a good performance for him. He's just in, ver in very good form for service. I agree with you that the pace could work against him, but I'll tell you something. He was very comfortable tracking that pace last time. He does not need the lead to run his best race. And I'm not sure he's gonna get it. He'll be close, but I think yeah. Shaft of Light's gonna I be agree. sent on a mission in here for Jorge Navarro, who I believe won this race several years ago with Pro 
private zone. Shaft of Light ran really well last time out mm -hmm. in the grade three Salvatore mile. They were really stretching his distance capabilities yeah, going true. a two-turn mile in that race. He did a lot of work fending off Sunny Ridge and upper stretch before the gallant Paige McKenney ran him down yeah. in the shadow of the wire. It was a really strong performance of Shaft of Light, who does have fast races yeah. on his page, fast enough to win this. Yeah, he really does. I mean, he'll pop occasionally with a figure that will make him really tough in this race. I personally felt like it was pretty tough to trust him to run one of those races. He hasn't really um, brought his top form to New York in the past, so we'll see if he can do it here. There's other pace in this race for him to deal with, too. I guess the biggest problem I have with him is I don't think he can be a great price in here, and as well as I, I think he ran going two turn mile last time, I don't like that Salvatore mile. I feel like he was only second in there because Sonny Ridge just didn't run his best race that day. Lewis Field, I'm a fan of this Maryland bread. I just think he's in a little bit too tough against these graded stakes foes. Ran really well early in the year, but look at the horses he was beating. It's yeah. the Journey and Struth. These are hard knocking Maryland breads. They're just not of the, the caliber of runner he's going to be facing on Saturday. And he's run well in two starts this year, but certainly not fast enough to win. Yeah, that's the real problem with him. He's not fast enough. He's also a speed with other speed in this race too. I guess that could really work against him. I thought he ran well last time in the Mr. Prospector. Maybe he was best in there. He dueled with the other pace horse. That horse finished last. The horse that ran him down got a perfect trip and caught him, but he still only ran a 91, and 91's not getting it done. Let's talk about our top selections for the Belmont Sprint Championship. I'm going to go with Limousine Liberal. I think he's consistent. I think he's going to work out a tracking yeah. trip, and I think he's found the right field to nab another graded stakes win. Let's talk a little bit about favorable outcome. Your top pick for Chad Brown. Again, a nice attack outside post position with fast enough race is to win, yeah. and I think it can make a case that he's a little bit dirtied up with his performances this year. I just thought he caught a speed rail track at Gulfstream in a seasonal debut. Yeah. The Carter handicap, who knew Army Mule was just going to explode like yeah, that for Todd Fletcher? And last time out, okay, he lost it 4-5, to five, but it was a sloppy track in a race where a fast horse controlled it from beginning to end. Yeah, he certainly had an excuse last time. He was never going to be able to catch recruiting ready once that horse got loose on the lead, and the pace was not fast at all for six and a half. Long. He ran fine in that race. Um, I'll put it this way. I picked him in this race. He, first of all, I just want to say that I really liked this horse early on. I thought he was going to be yeah. good. He well, hasn't, he turned, out, he hasn't turned out to be as good as I thought he was going to be, but he's okay. I think he fits really well in this field, and he's probably going to be third choice in this race, which is fine for me. I don't want to bet Limousine Liberal or Whitmore in this race. If I'm being honest, Dan, I only sent a pick in because those are the rules, and I play by the rules. you got to have a pick in the race. I don't really want to bet him. I don't want to bet anybody in this race, but if I do bet somebody, I'll bet him as the third choice. But I do know you want to bet this juicy pick four because you yeah. have opinions later in the card, so well, I know you'll be using favorable outcome. What do you do with a horse like Limousine I mean, in, mu in multi-race ragers, I can't really stand too hard against Limousine Liberal or Whitmore right. because this is just the kind of race where they've, they've really found the right kind of field and maybe they're just the two best horses. I can't stand against them. I just don't want to bet either one of them to win. But you would go 6-1-2 in the multis, kicking yeah. off the pick four. Your top four single race selections are 6-1-2-3. I'm going to go 1-6-2-4 and four in the Grade 2 Belmont Sprint Championship, one of several graded stakes races on Stars and Stripes Saturday. You can bet them all with the new DRF Bets account and $100 in free cash. Learn more at DRF.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for the Grade 2 Belmont Sprint Championship. A win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Sprint, 5-11 Eastern. Good luck.